Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2020 Panini Chronicles Baseball. Uh, eight box, random team break number one. It's a half case break, boys and girls. All cards ship. One and two are from the run and two random teams are from the same case. And an early bird special. If you're one of the, one of the uh, first 18 spots uh, purchased straight up, you got a chance at an extra spot. So let's grab those 18 names, put them into this separate list right here, different from the other dice roll. Roll it, randomize it, four and a one, five times. Name on top after five. One, two, three, four, and five. After five times, we got Kyle Cook. There you go, Kyle. The early bird catches. Oh, you were the earliest of birds. He was the first spot taken. So the early bird, the early, early bird catches the delicious, delicious worm. Mmm, worms. All right, so there's everybody right here. So now there's 30 names on this list. There's the team list right there. Let's roll it. Let's randomize it. One and a four, five times. Five again. One, two, three, four, and five. After five times, we got Mark all the way down to Anthony. One and a four, five times for the teams. One, two, three, four, and fifth and final time. After five, we've got the Friars all the way down to the Tigres. Too aggressive, right there. We go. All right, Mark with the Padres, Kyle with the Royals, Andy with the Cardinals, Chris Freeze with the Diamondbacks, Raymond with the Marlins, David with the Astros, Asa with the Red Sox, Darren with the Rockies and Indians, Richard with the Giants, Dan with the Blue Jays, Richard with the Halos, Arthur with the A's, Brian with the Nats, Darren with the Pirates, Kyle Cook, your early bird spot. You got the Twins, Brian with the Rangers, Rhea with the Orioles, TJ with the Cubs, Charles with the Mets, Richard with the Braves. Megan, you got the White Sox. Nice. Witt with the Reds. Mike G with the Rays. Nicholas Stone with the Mariners. Robert Runkel with the Brew Crew. Anthony with the Phillies. Lloyd, you got my Dodgers. Nick with the Yankees. And Anthony with the Tigers. Let's alphabetize this by column B by team. I actually apologize, folks. I don't think I have a checklist handy, but if you go to groupratechecklist.com, you should be able to dig one up. In fact, should we just go there right now? Just drop the link for you so you have a, you have a shot at uh, maybe making some trades. Uh, Rays are for trade, by the way. Just spinning. There we go. They sure did, Rex. They 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 did put Spectra in the in uh, in it this year. All right, so there it is. Groupratechecklist.com. It'll send you to that PDF page right there, and you can take a look at all of uh, all of the different hits that your teams could potentially get. Now, while you are while you're considering trades, I'm going to flip back to that team list in just a second. But let me select uh, eight boxes for us here. I, you know, I, I was mentioning that all, all during these chronicle breaks too, Rex. Like, I, I want, I want Spectra baseball. It's Spectra baseball. It's own solo set. It's own set. All right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight on the left side, eight on the right side. I'm going to select the die. I'm going to select that one. One, two, three for the left side, four, five, six for the right side. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the side we're going to do here. We're going to mark this RT so we don't confuse them with the pick your teams that we're going to do tonight. So this is RT2.
So there's RT2 right there. Okay, I guess we'll save these right here. There's a good chance we'll do that tonight. Yeah, Sean Jaspi will, will go as late as you want him to, ladies and gentlemen. So he's going to come on after this break, which is going to be about 40 minutes or so. He's going to come on right after this. And we'll do a recap at the end as well. So if you're re-watching the video, you can just skip ahead to the end. All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video really quick. Allow for a little bit of trade, a little extra trading time. When we come back, we'll uh, we'll do the break. Stick around. All right, welcome back, folks. A uh, little bit of trade chatter, but in the end, there were no deals done. So here in Random Team One, right here on the twenty fifth. Thanks everyone for getting in. Random Team Two already in the store. If you want to run the second half back. Oh, there, okay. I thought, I thought I was missing a name on this list. I was like, no. Couldn't spot Kyle Cook's early bird team. That's the Twins. All right, let's roll. Who do I have in the fight tomorrow night? Well, who's fight? Wait, who's fighting tomorrow? What's the big? Israel Adesanya. Versus, Adesanya? Versus, Costa. versus Costa. I mean, both great fighters who have uh, who have a lot to fight for in this in that in that matchup in a tough matchup tomorrow. Title, Title fight even. I think uh, certainly a style fits one fighter more than the other. Punching and kicking and grounding and pounding. Stay up, stay down. I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen in a, in a big fight like that. So that's what, that's what I'm going with. Best analysis in the biz, ladies and gentlemen. Best analysis in the biz. All right, so I know I'm they're, they're all, all card chip. There's just too much going on here. But we'll try to catch some of the top rookies like Bo Bichette and... And uh, Gavin Lux and Luis Robert and whatnot. But all card ships. Oh, a plate. That'll ship. Bobby Bradley. One of one. That goes to Derek Redding and the Tribe. Nice. That's pretty cool. These printing plates are all... I mean... I don't think they, they sell as well as I think they should, but I always think they're really awesome. One of one out of fives and under, get the train whistle. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! Got Dexter Fowler, all card chip, of course. And all the numbered cards and these Bo Bichettes that I'll sleeve up right here will, uh, will be top loaded by our shipping team before they go out. That Cody Bellinger, not numbered. There's Matt Chapman to 99. Relic, Oakland uh, A's. It goes to Arthur, who's looking for uh, Jesus Lazardo. It's a start. I like these mosaic baseball cards look really sharp. There's Aristides Aquino, 44 out of 99 for the Red Legs. That's going to go to Witt and the Reds. There's our first Luis Robert and a Tony Gonsolin autograph on card auto for the Dodgers. Lloyd Corbett with my boys in blue. There you go. He's been making some starts. Been looking pretty good. Loves cats. <laughs> it's true. I'm not kidding. Look at his Twitter. Look at his Instagram. It's Pete Alonzo. Loves cats. All these Luis Roberts will go to Megan and the White Sox. All the Roberts will will add up. I don't know if Lazardo's selling 
especially well or not, Rex. He's a good pitcher. He's great, but it always seems as if the, the pitchers never never quite sell as much as the hitters. Unless they're like elite pitchers, I guess, but the hitters always seem to do better. Out of 50, DJ Stewart for the O's, Rhea. But Arthur, yeah, oh, there, Arthur said it. Yeah, Arthur, Arthur PCs him because he was, he was born in Peru. He's from Peru. And then went to, but I, but I think he like moved to the States when he was really young. Because I think he went to high school here. Ooh, Boys of Summer on card autograph. 14 out of 25, Fernando Tatis Jr. That goes to Mark and the Padres. These America's Pastimes cards are really sharp. All right, nice first box, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's go with another one. So still it's sec second year for Nano Tatis, but I think I think even his second year cards are still carrying some some solid value on the secondary market. Next box. And like I said, we'll do a quick uh, recap at the end of this break. Second half of this is in the store, jazbeescasebreaks.com. I know, right? One of one plate and a Tatis Jr. That could have been a nice personal box for somebody. We do have personal boxes available, ladies and gentlemen. Ted is currently doing our Instagram live stream tonight. He'll be doing it tonight and tomorrow. At Jaspies Breaks. On Instagram live only. Check it out. Seven nights a week. And then Sean, who you'll see do the main channel here later tonight, also does Instagram on Sunday and Mondays too. Jersey and autograph, Abraham Toro. Houston Astros, David with that one, David Chan. Forty-seven out of ninety-nine. The way the hobbies explode, I don't think it'll matter much on whether it's rookie or second year. Your thoughts? I think. I mean, I think rookies will always going to sell a lot better than the second year cards. But I think the second year cards do have more value than they used to have, though. There's Logan Allen, ninety-four out of ninety-six. Well, yeah, at at, at Tatis is at an at, at an elite level, though. So he's like. There's Logan Allen for the uh, Indians, Derek Redding. But for Tatis, yeah, I think I think he will. I think obviously his rookie cards are still going to be like the top tier cards, but but his second year cards, I'm sure, still have a lot of value though. And the rookies are always going to trump the second year cards in general. There's Zach Gallon to fifty. And Jesus Lazardo, jersey and autograph. There you go, Arthur. That is kind of hard. To, 95 out of 99. That's about that's about how fast his fastball goes. 95, 99, maybe around there. There you go, man. PC. Chris Freeze with Diamondbacks gets that Zach Gallen card. Some more Gonsal in there too. Austin Hayes. More Luis Robert. Another Lu I wish they'd bring status back. I'm a fan of that status design. You should bring that back, I think. Corey Seager has been swinging a good bat this year. Some people in some some people in LA think that he may may get some uh may get some MVP votes. I don't think he's gonna win it, but 
think he'll get some MVP votes. All right. Kyle Lewis for the M's. That's going to go to um, Kyle Lewis is going to go to as a Mariners. Can't, Nicholas Stone. And that Josh Bell with the relic in the background goes to the Padres, Mark L. Christopher, it's not on the schedule because it's not sold out yet. At least not to my knowledge, unless it's sold out like five minutes ago or since I started this break, 15 minutes ago, that is. There's Josh Rojas, 13 out of 49. And a Jesus Lazardo for Arthur. All card ship, folks. It says sold out on the page. Hmm. Always double check for filler breaks, Chris. There might maybe there's a filler attached to it. Maybe that's why it's not on the schedule yet. These mats, uh, now I have to do this whole thing because Rex is going to cause trouble. These mats are padded, ladies and gentlemen, so any cards that I drop are well protected. It's going to be fine. Wasn't even numbered, wasn't even a hit, but it'll still be fine. So don't worry about that, folks. It's Justin Dunn. Jamming me up, Rex. Here's Justin Dunn for uh, the Mariners. Nicholas Stone. There's Jordan Alvarez. There you go, Chris. Yeah, always look out for those mini breaks or fillers. Anytime you see something sell out, boys and girls, a good exercise is to kind of double check the that same sports section and be like, hey, is there anything else that needs to happen before it's really sold out? Always double check that. Thanks. Yeah, we got it from Panini. It's a player of the day mat. In fact, there's another mat underneath it for even additional protection, ladies and gentlemen. That's the 25. That is Carlos Martinez for the Cardinals. Andy with that one. Another Gavin Lux Crusade. Bo Bichette. More Gavin Lux and a Michael Baez autograph for the Padres. That'll be for Mark. All right. What else do we got here? Alex Bremen, I do like these Spectra cards. They got it. Panini, if you're listening, I know sometimes you are. Spectra Baseball, let's make it happen. And a Luis Ro oh, I thought it might be an autograph right here. Luis Robert, two-color jersey. Got a bit of the Chicago pinstripe in there. Pulsar pattern and gold. Nice. Should be out of 10. Nine out of 10. That is nice. Megan got randomized the White Sox in this break. I don't know how, the, I don't know how well the relics do for Luis Robert, but that's got to be nice. Could be a could be a rookie of the year candidate this year. It's either him or Kyle Lewis. Did the Angels really blow it? 
Are you serious? I was just joking. Great, great job, Angels bullpen. Just ruining Sean's dreams of, of, of Mike Trout actually being in the playoffs for the second time in his life. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see, let's see the misery. What happened? I mean, Dodgers have clinched everything, so I'm just waiting for playoffs now. Is Darvish going to win the Cy Young, Rex? Is that going to happen? Let's, uh, let's go plays. Scoring plays, maybe? All right, bottom of the fifth. Justin Turner, homers on a fly ball to left field. Makes it 5-4, Angels. And then Will Smith, homers on a fly ball to left field. Max Muncy scores. Two home runs, three runs. Dodgers up 6-5, effectively ending the Angels' dream. Right, there actually is a lot of game left. Okay, fair enough. Six, seven, eight, there's going to the bottom of the six. True, true. So in case you're just joining us, Sean Jaspi, who you'll see after this break to do all the late night breaks with you, of which there are, should be many. Angels fan, and he was telling me earlier today, uh, if the Angels sweep the Dodgers and if the Rangers sweep the Astros and An Rangers won tonight in a walk-off, then the... Uh, Angels will sneak into the playoffs. So I guess it could happen. There's Justin Upton, speaking of the Angels, 75. Bo Bichette. Rex thinks Darvis should win the Scion. Another Bo Bichette. To 149, well, 199, that is. And speaking of the Dodgers, here's Edwin Rios. Autograph? Yes, America's pastime auto. 12 out of 99. He's a player that can certainly uh, benefit from a universal DH. As an as an NL guy, I'm not I'm not too too thrilled with the Universal DH, but he's not exactly he's been working on. It. He's not exactly the best best guy in the field though. Lloyd with the Dodgers gets the Edwin Rios. He's got a good swing, good power. And then we got Yonder Mendez for the Rangers. That'll go to Texas. That'll be for Brian M. Yeah, you you Darvish, I I I think, I think probably was one of the people that got affected the most individually. I mean, the press here in LA just crushed him, you know. Fans crushed him. People were, you know, players saying, "Oh, he's, he's tipping his pitches," you know, he's tipping those pitches, and you know, I think that got in his head. There's a Tatis. Wow. Another Tatis Jr. autograph, and that's a buyback auto. You can see the stamp right up there, and then you can see his blue ink autograph on this bought back card. Wow. Rookie Tatis Jr. All right, so they bought this card back from last year's set, stamped it, eight out of, stamped 10 of them, stamped it on the front right there, sent it to Tatis Jr., he signed them, sent them back. Boom, they're in this set. That's how it goes. Padres, Mark L. Two now. Very nice. And that's our second buyback, too. We had one in a different case earlier today. So they're out there. Nice Bobochette mosaic silver and another mosaic, or I'm sorry, another status Bobochette for Dan and the Blue Jays. 
Jordan Alvarez to 100. J.D. Martinez. Chronicles Jordan Alvarez. And we got a Timeless Treasures Luis Robert. Rubnet Odor. Piece of his jersey back there for the Rangers. That's going to be for Brian. Yeah, I'm not thrilled with that ink choice either, Mike Towers. I don't know. For all we know, Panini gave him a silver ink pen or a gold ink pen and then he didn't use it. But yeah, great idea. But maybe different ink, different ink next time, Panini. All right. Four boxes to go. We've got about another 20 minutes to go in this break. There's not too many boxes. This break is always deceptively long just because there's so many, so many things going on here. All right, so almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Halfway through this half case random team break. Random team two. Is in the store already if you want to run this back. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. If you want your own personal box of this, jaspies.com. And you can watch that unbox right now. At Jaspies Breaks on Instagram. Instagram only. At Jaspies Breaks. There's Steven Gonzalez. Autograph. Nice. Twins, that's going to be for Kyle Cook in his early bird spot. To, to 199. There's green Bobachette, not numbered. I think the green ones of these are out of five. And Domingo Leba, Chris Fries. To 99. Diamondbacks. We got Zach Collins. Nice Zach Collins for Megan and the White Sox. Losing my voice a little bit here late at night. All right. All right, so Zach Collins goes to the White Sox. Megan with that one. Sam, you really wish Thompson didn't hold the Monopoly on baseball card. Yeah, I wonder how that... I don't know if they hold the Monopoly on it. I think it's really what the... Uh, it's really what the MLB and the MLBPA allows. So I think it's more that. Like, they, they pretty much... They pretty much said, hey, if you pay this much, you can't have the exclusive. Just like how Panini, you know, paid the most. So I think it's really more of an argument to tell to tell MLB and the Players Association, hey, make an agreement 
and open it up for, uh, you know, open it up for, for everybody else, for other distribu uh, other manufacturers. There's Byron Bucks and Relic. Byron Buxton, Twins, Kyle Cook. Uh, I drink both, Matt Solway. I drink both. Yeah, I don't notice the logo. I don't notice the no logo thing anymore either. And also, just over the years, you'll you'll have you'll notice that that Panini will do better at taking photographs of maybe the back or you know what I mean where they don't show the logo or the front of the jersey so it doesn't seem as as obvious right so they're always in motion there he's swinging his head is maybe turned away so they intentionally do a pretty good job with the design to avoid that now obviously it still says Chicago you're not going to see the logo on the back of the card or anything like that but I don't know I've, I've not really, it's not really been glaringly obvious all the time. One advantage though, and you'll see, one advantage, and you'll see this, see this with a certain baseball products like NT and Flawless Baseball, is that since they save money, right, on the baseball license, because they don't have the, have the logos, right? Since they save money there, they can pay more to have nicer relics in baseball product. So oftentimes, I think, oftentimes I think you'll see really nice relics and bat barrels and bat knobs and stuff like that. So with the money they save, guess what? You're seeing more bat knobs and bat barrels in like NT and Flawless. So yeah, so that's what it is. Well, I think I think Tops can't do NFL, no logo NFL, and no, and they can't do no logo NBA because Panini has paid the extra premium to be the only people that do it. You wish that Tops and Panini would come together for the good of the collector. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's like saying I wish Nike and. Adidas would come together for the good of the the shoe consumer and make cheaper shoes available for everybody. I mean, at the end of the day, they're still businesses. Why can't Ford and Chevy just for the good of the people just make a make a supercar? We'll put their brains together, put their heads together and make a make an amazingly efficient car that'll go really fast and be super safe and cheap 97 out of 99 Byron Bucks and Relic but I think that's what that's what it is though mix up is that is that they're competitors at the end they're business competitors at the end of the day is Byron Buxton to 99 it's another twin actually more access to my penny sleeves there It would be nice if if they were able to share, but I, I'm not I'm not holding my breath on that. There's Pablo Reyes, Pittsburgh Pirates. That's for Darren Redding. More Luis Roberts. The status one is numbered to 99, Megan. Eight out of 99 on that one. This one's another regular Chronicles base, Luis Robert, rookie. Another Luis Robert. The Titan design. And I hate, listen, mix up. 
years and years, even even a little bit before Jaspies, when I was kind of kind of reintroducing myself back into the hobby, and as the years went on with with Jaspies, I thought that too. But then I then I just realized, you know what? I'm not going to hold my breath. They're a business. I'm going to enjoy Panini baseball stuff for what it is, and enjoy Topps baseball stuff for what it is, and and I think the market will respond. Here, this is for Derek Redding and the Indians. If it's good, people are going to buy it. Right? If it's not good, people won't buy it. If NT without low, if NT and Flawless without logos just didn't sell, they just wouldn't do it anymore. But guess what? People are enough people are buying more than enough people are buying it to be honest with you. Where there's Trevor Bauer, where they're still producing it. There's Sean Murphy, jersey and autograph. Jesus Lazardo's battery mate going to Arthur and the A's. Brian O, what's going on? Yeah, that, I mean, that's not a bad point either, Rex. Yeah, if if uh, if Topps and Panini had, had competing all logo baseball cards and whatnot, they might cannibalize each other's value too. Maybe there is something to be said about maybe Bowman Chrome is valuable just because it, it is what it is, Bowman Chrome. You know, maybe NT, you know, would has its own little unique kind of corner of the hobby. So maybe maybe that limits the because I think the MLB PA and the and NFL and all those organizations have a minimum or have a maximum of how many products they can release a year. So for those of you who like panic about oh my god they're going to overproduce. No, they can they can only make X amount of football product a year, X amount of basketball product a year, and X amount of um, X amount of uh, baseball product a year. So if if they shared licenses, if Top shared a baseball license with Chronicles, then both of those guys can maybe only do. 15 or 20 releases a year or something like that, you know, instead of one company being, you know, it's the release schedule is get, gets all wacky and the number of releases gets, gets different. Here's Tyrone Taylor. But see, that, that's the thing. Like, why would, if I'm, if I'm the head of Panini, why would I share my NFL license with tops? What's in it for me? If I'm if I'm you know looking for the best interests of Panini, there's Tyrone Taylor, Milwaukee Brewers, Robert Runkle, and if I'm you know and if I'm uh, if I'm tops, what's in it for me if I share baseball licenses with Panini to help improve their brand, to make NT look even better, a product that's not ours look better? Sure, we get a little bit a bit of money off of it, but. I think in the long run, I, I don't know if I, I as a, if I was a tops executive would want to do that. There's Evan White for the Mariners to 99 luminance autograph for the M's. That's going to be for Nicholas Stone. I don't know if it's a Tesla sticker on a Chevy argument. I mean, this has just no logo. I think the argument is there's no logos. Why doesn't Topps share an ML, the MLB license with with Panini so there could be logos on there? I just don't think that would make sense. Now, if the MLBPA and the MLB who controls those licenses say, we want it split up, then there's nothing the companies could do. But the truth is, the base, the Major League Baseball, MLB and MLBPA, you know, like, I think it's easier for them just to deal with one license instead of Panini and Tops. Think about it. If you're a, there's Michael Baez right there for the Padres, right? 
if the MLBPA, right, there's their logo, there, there's the MLBPA logo. If, I mean, currently they have to deal with Panini and Tops right now, all these players. So Michael Bias has to sign for, for Panini and do Panini events, and he has to do, you know, Tops events and whatnot. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, and I'm not sure it's not that big of a hassle, but it's a lot easier if one license controls the whole thing because they're only dealing with one, you know, contractor as opposed to three different contractors trying to do your roof or something like that. All right, mix up saying in his world you would rent the MLB license for NT Flawless Immaculate and maybe Phoenix from Tops in return, and you allow Tops to make football and NBA products approved by Panini. See, I mean that would never happen. I think business-wise, it would just never happen. It's like it's like saying. Adidas should share, share some of their proprietary stuff with Nike and Nike should share some stuff with with with, with Adidas and I just don't think that's ever going to happen. You know, so I think it's much more beneficial for well, I mean, why allow if you have an exclusive on the NFL and NBA, why even allow an, a, a competing company to even get a foothold in? To the market. So business-wise, no, I don't, I don't think that they would do that. And remember, it's not their, it's not their license to, to divvy up however they want to. There are deals in place. Pete Alonzo Mets, Charles Byrne. And there's Aaron Judge to 99. No, I hear you're saying it's just I I just I it just wouldn't work, I think. How does Panini have game use jersey autos of Tua? I don't think they say game use. Almost all rookies, at least in the last five or six years, almost all rookies will all be, it'll all say on the back of their cards, um, event worn or player worn. And it's only until their second or third years where you'll actually start seeing game use stuff for, for players. So Tua Relics, will not say, should not say, game use. If it does, it's probably just a mistake. Yeah, but he's talking like, if that comes out so much later, they'll have game use stuff. Yeah. All right, Rex, what do you got? Being in the business and talking to government, have you ever heard why they can use, why they can use full logo patches on the cards? I think I'm misreading that. There's Anthony K for the Blue Jays, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sam, every time I bring that up to the Angels fans here, they're quick to point out that the Dodgers haven't won a World Series since 1988. So I guess I'll hang on to that. Another Luis Robert. Oh, oh, oh! I see, what you're, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, that I don't know. That's a good question, actually. They can't use logos on the cards, but they can have patches from jerseys. That Jake Cave goes to Kyle Cook. 
That must that must be a different designation. Like the the material of a jersey versus versus the production of a card and putting logos on there, and the right to use those logos must be different from when they like maybe buy a a, a jersey to to cut up. Maybe at that point they can do whatever they want with it because they they own that jersey, right? But they wouldn't have the, they couldn't put a logo on a new shirt and call it a jersey, you know. There's Aaron Saval, Indian, Derek Redding. That'd be my speculation. That 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 I I don't really know for sure, but it's interesting. Red, hopefully the Angels can overtake and knock out the Astros. Well, they'd have to beat the Do they'd have to sweep the Dodgers, and the Rangers would have to continue beating the Astros. Then the Angels could overtake the Astros and getting the playoffs. Could happen. Their they're, Angels are only down a run. Here's Edwin Rios. Edwin Rios Dinger. No, they're not even pitching to him. There's Glaber Day going to the Yankees. Nick Galvin. Along with all these Aaron Judge and all a bunch of other Yankees being shipped to you too. There's Mike Trout. Bruce Hall, greater all to 99. Trey Mancini. Almost done, folks. You have zero confidence in the Dodgers in the playoffs either. No reason until they show they can. Just can't win when it matters. Kurt. Well, what about the cheating in 2017? See? I'm not even pushing that. See, the Astros just go scot-free. Everyone just forgets about that. Everyone just goes, oh, the Dodgers just blew it. No, they got robbed of a World Series. They were cheating. There were two games in Houston that the Dodgers could have won, right? That's a word. Then the whole narrative changes. See, this, and the Astros, not a single player suspended. And the narrative inside Sam Banks' head is that the Dodgers just can't win it. But they should have. And 2017 was probably their best chance. I don't think the 2019 team was as good, or the 2018 team was as good. And by 2019, they were just gassed, and they just got destroyed by the Nationals. All right. Um, oh, I was going to do a quick recap. So a lot of cool stuff here, folks. A little bit of a long break, but I think there's a lot of... It doesn't feel as long as this break really is because I think there's just so many different... It's like a mixer, right? There's just so many different things that we're seeing visually. I don't think the Dodgers knew they were doing it. I think Alex Wood did. There was a nice tease right there. I think Alex Wood did. Maybe had a s suspicion. And he changed some signs in one of the games. But I, I don't I don't think I don't think they were it was like a full team wide sort of thing. A lot, I think, Brad. Alright, and their or their arm is covering the logo on the front. So they 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 find clever ways to to avoid making it look that obvious. Couple really nice I mean a lot of nice hits in this stack right here. But especially these right here, the buyback and the boys of summer, both on cart autos look really sharp. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Good convo, uh, good chatting about the hobby. We love doing this. Uh, and stick with us through the baseball playoffs. Chat more baseball, break more baseball with us. We love doing it. So I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. That was 2020 Panini Chronicles Baseball. Pick your team or random team, number one. Half case, random team, number one. Second half in the store, jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you for that one next time. Bye-bye.